Well, hi, Chad. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, hey, Paul. How's no it problem. going? Uh, it's another day in Georgia out here, buddy. All right. Still daylight there. For another 10 minutes. Well, you said that five minutes ago. Right. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> and it's not very cold either. It's not cold at all. I got a t shirt on. Well, it's pretty cold here. That's why I've got my big leather jacket on, but more about that later. I was going to. I was going to ask you about um, Teresa's RAV4. I'm a bit confused. A, li a little bit like um, Judge... What was his name? Judge Can in the on-bank review. Uh, he says, why, why, why do we need two killers? Can you just explain, why do we need three RAV4s? Uh, Hello. Hey, dude. Yeah, do I do I got a lot of feed there, Paul? Yeah, you should have. Yeah. It's telling me that I have um, that I'm off air. Well, I'll just check your control panel, but uh, but no, no, you are you are definitely well. I think you've got control of your video camera because you are on a, yes, and I can click on that, share controls, but uh, yeah, I think you're coming through, let me just check, I'll check on my, uh, yes, my yes, channel. Yes, yes. One second, I'll just check this. Yep, uh, well... Yep, yeah, there you go. I can see you. Okay. Yep, absolutely fine. Yes, yes, Travis, he is vertical, which is uh, which is more than can be said for a few hours' time. Is that right, mate? There, is that better? <laughs> <laughs> and that's certainly more than what's going to be said about me in a few hours' time. Right. I'll certainly not be vertical. <laughs> One of my favorite pictures is one of Rabsi Nesbitt, where he says, I've never been to America, but I've been in a few states. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to, I don't know if you, if, if you heard my question. A little bit like uh, the Seventh Circuit arm bank judge McCann, he says to uh, Laura Nyrider, why do we need two killers? So my question to you would be, why do we need three RAV4s? Yeah, good question. Um, you know, it depends on, on who you ask how many RAV4s there are. There's one, there's two, and then there's possibly three. So, yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's a good question, depending on which angle of the theory or story you want to tell, you know. Um uh, I, I know a lot of people know Richard Boyd and, and Richard, Richard does a lot of um, research. On yeah. The rap for, I mean, he, a lot of people write him off as being a lunatic, but I like the guy. I mean, he's, he's pretty cool, pretty cool guy. And his, his research is, is invaluable. I mean, you know, to the point where whether you like him or not, he's got something to say about it, you know? I, 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 I'll be honest. I, I I like him. I like him. Right. Right. Yeah. And and the thing the thing is that that you know, <laughs> we, we we all come from different backgrounds, different perspectives, but we're all here for one reason, and it doesn't matter, you know, whether wh what background we came from. We're all here because because we don't like the fact that somebody from a what was considered to be a a lowly background, uh, you know, a, a salvage yard man. Has been so badly treated, not right. yet, but but his his young nephew has been uh, dragged into this um, for various reasons, um, range, ranging from saving the state thirty six million to uh, right right up to uh, exposing all manner of 
corruption. Um, I know that you're uh, not particularly pleased with uh, Josh Call being appointed. Oh to no, general. not at all. Um, the, the the reason, okay, yeah, all of us supporters and Stephen Avery, he's got great news from Zellner. You know, they won their little little appeal. The only thing is. Um, Back like when when Brendan Dassey was going through his appeals, um, you know Tom Fallon's desk. Me, me, you, and uh, the dude were talking about it on our last show. How the little desk is in with the big desk in the same office, and that little desk, you know, is Tom Fallon's. But he he put a bug. Me and me and Juan Tescrew, we kind of figured that that Brad Schimmel was more duped, if anything, in his participation. And, um, you know, they, they jumped right to the conclusion and that they needed to prevent anything with Brendan Dassey. And um, so, so now with Josh Call being Lautenschlager's son, attorney gen- general, I, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm predicting a couple of roadblocks. I mean, I'm just going to call the political stuff how I see it. And I see even, even with the, in the bounds of getting a new trial, I see – call gonna be throwing some roadblocks you know um some some serious roadblocks to to try to prevent this and um i i still don't know if it's gonna be um taken if if all the shit sweeping you know all the all the players are gonna be taken out this level still i still think it might have to go up to the next circuit you know i I mean the thing is we have we have um 20 million watching eyes now the entire world's watching it's not just the united states i mean you have the entire world watching there's um it's it's amazing how big this case is i've i've met people that don't even know who john benet ramsey is nor oj yeah. simpson it's like how have you never heard of oj simpson but they heard of stephen avery you know and when you got that many people watching it's like you might just want to quietly let him walk away, you know, Steve, let Stephen Avery go. But I'm anxious to see how this one plays out, you know. Very, very anxious. I, I am really chuckling to myself because, you know, one of the things that me and the dude go at hammer and tongs is, is his sense of geography and this idea that, well, I'll, I'll, put, it, I'll put it simply. I remember once watching the Super Bowl, whatever year it was, and 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 you know the the reporter saying to the to the, the winning team the captain or whatever quarterback how does it feel to be the world champions and it's like come on get real you know you're not the world champions America is not the world it's 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 an, a very important country yes it's a very big country it, I mean, it <laughs> but it's, it's not continent the world. but it's only one of five continents you know there there's a lot of other continents out there isn't there you know. All right, yeah, and and uh, as, as you're absolutely correct, right? I mean, I uh, yes, I I have heard of O.J. Simpson. I thought it was a a, a very important um, part of our news for uh, for quite a while, and I have in fact heard of John Benet Ramsey. Um, I hadn't I hadn't heard of Stephen Avery. I hadn't heard of Manitrock, and I hadn't heard of uh, you know the, um, the the shenanigans going on there until making a murderer. Although I had heard of uh, Green Bay, obviously, because of the Green Bay Packers. But this whole idea that, you know, as, as you say, that the, the the exposure. I mean, surely it'll help the fact that uh, Kathleen Zellner now has been at this since the uh, beginning of 2016. And, and she, she's now beginning to realise that, as, as you quite rightly pointed out, she's going to have to look beyond Avery Road because these guys are, are determined to try and uh, and close her down yes um you you definitely have to be going beyond avery road and you know I, that's been that's been where i'm at for like over three years right now you know go is is the beyond avery road and i i, I mean the thing is fallon fallon is still still on this you know yeah uh, they pulled norman gan out of retirement to come back on. Um, uh, I thought we had a victory back, um, you know, near the end of, uh, I, I guess it was near the end of 2018 there where he, 
he uh, resigned from the case. You know, Fallon resigned, but now he's back on. So, um, and then then we have the um, convicting a murderer, uh, Sean Sean Rex documentary about the air, and I can't wait to hear the load of shit Fassbender and everybody else has got to say. You know, oh. um, I I am really looking forward to that. Not least because. Um, Eric Ozzy reckons he was interviewed in Manitowoc by, well, if, as, as he was saying, if, if it wasn't the uh, Making a Murder team, then who was it? Could it have been this, um, what, what, what's the series called again, remind me? The, the Convicting a Murderer. Convicting a Murderer. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I have done a little bit of research into this Sean Rett thing. I cannot find anywhere that's that's got this uh is it called murder in the park where they yeah. they managed to get um somebody out who was clearly guilty but right. it was gone through such a lot of pressure but i mean that 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 i've i've, I've never never heard of anything quite like that before and this oh. this idea that loads of other cases are going to be the same what what's interesting what i find fascinating about this sean wreck um he was i, I looked him up on idmb you know, and he yeah. was born under a different name, okay? And, like, he he does a lot of wrongful conviction docuseries and documentaries. Yeah. But why the hell are you working with Ken Kratz? I mean, if you've done, if you've got expertise in videography and video productions and you, you've helped people to get exonerated, how the hell can you not see what's going on? Yeah. You know? I, 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 for for the life of me, I just I just cannot see how is he is buying Ken Kratz's load of bullshit. And I think I think maybe he jumped on Kratz's team just so he could get some money from some investors and get you, you know he, there, there's no way you can be a, a filmmaker in, in America and think that Stephen Avery is guilty. You yeah. know, yeah. I mean let. Let the prosecution team and Nancy Nancy Grace sell that bullshit to the world, but <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. I see I, I see Sean Reck probably making a couple of dollars off the idea and then maybe staying more neutral, just so he can get a payday. You know, I mean a lot of people collecting paydays off the Avery Dassey vehicle at the moment. You know, a lot of yeah. people. Yeah, a, a lot of people and. I, I don't I don't know. Um, as far as the truth being being told, we still ain't got the truth. We got five or six, seven books out, uh, two series. Then we got convicting a murder. We have all the TV shows, Fast Bender and Kratz has appeared on appeared on. And damn truth, you know, it's, it goes pretty deep. Well, yeah. Well, it, it's one of the things that does annoy me is the fact that uh, we've got so many questions to which we don't have any answers. Um, so, so we're basically uh, on, on with, with regards to a lot of things. We're kind of in the gut, in the dark, and it's not because we're particularly thick and and cannot put two and two together. It's the fact that we just don't have the, you know, there was never the um, the investigation done that, that that was able to to come up with the. The, the facts that we need about this case. Um, and so I, I was going to ask you about um, our lead investigator that handed over the bones. Right. You're talking about, um, um, okay. On, on, on the burn pit at the time. Yeah. Mr. Or... Wiegert. Yeah. Yeah. A, um, a, friend, well... a friend of mine who I've sent many emails to, and he actually replied to me on one occasion. I wondered if you'd actually um, been in touch with Mr. Wiegert at all. <laughs> you, you know, you know that those bones have been handled so many times. It's like which which incident of handing over. Um, I I, I think instead of Wiegert, you know, um, there's still um, Tom Sturdivant still needs to be accounted for and I'm, I'm surprised there's you know like i wonder what zellner's take is on tom sturdivant because he was with mr yoss standing at the burn pit when they looked down and found him and how the hell 
if you got a DCI agent, you know, that's that's the attorney state general's like lieutenants, they're private investigators, they're their mm-hmm. personal investigation unit, right? And you're looking down and seeing bones, and it's not like you had a rookie cop standing at the burn pit. You had you had someone in a higher position than Uyghur, you know? I mean, mm-hmm. I mean like Fassbender and Uyghur basically took control of the case, which Fassbender mm-hmm. had more control than Uyghur being DCI. But, dude, you're Tom Sturdivant. You're a DCI agent. Well, he makes sure them bones were photographed, you know? And... and, and but to to me, you know, if those bones were planted, if you go back and look at the at the transcript, um, the the dogs, you know, they were they were down in the gravel pit, mm-hmm. and and the the rat the rat and quarry, they were away from the yard. And if you're gonna plant bones and walk those bones up and plant them on the fire pit, you'd have to know the schedule of the dogs and who better to know the schedule of the dogs than the DCI. You can't walk bones, a box of bones to drop on the um, fire pit and plant it. If the dogs are in your yard, you got to take those dogs far away, you know, and mm-hmm. then, then walk them on there and plant them. So, so I'm anxious to see what, what Zellner's unearthing about Tom Sturdivant more than, than anything at the moment, you know? Well, one of the interesting things about Tom Sturdivant, of course, is that during the trial, the, the, the question of the lack of photographs was actually addressed. And it was Dean Strang that was interviewing him. And uh, Tom Sturdivant basically said, well, you know, um, if, if anybody is responsible for the lack of photographs, it's me. And I'll take the criticism that comes. Right. And, and do you know how much criticism came his way? <laughs> what, 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 what's less than one right 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 <laughs> you know and, and and it's like oh okay what 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 are the what are the reporters doing what well, the, what the f is the job of the of the the, the so-called reporters in wisconsin that well, well, this case? here's the thing me, me and Juan Tesker, we've we gone over this a few times. You can only report to the media what law enforcement gives you to report. Yeah. You know? So so what was being reported by the um, – what wasn't being reported was because the lack of information was coming in from law enforcement. Now, now I've, I've jumped um, – uh, you know, there's there's several writers that jumped their ass, newspapers, um, reporters, uh, and everything. And I and and I've I've emailed them. I called them out. I'm like, uh, 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 one of them had actually responded back to me that they had reached out to Attorney General Lautenschlager's office. Okay, she basically recused herself from the case. Is why she's been quiet. But they told they told. Um, the, she told the reporter her her office, you know, get all your information from the lead investigators, and they wouldn't talk about it. Even when they tried to ask questions, they wouldn't talk about it, and and they won't even disclose it. You know, why well, they disclose it? Like, like why didn't they make a lot of this stuff live? Um, and Jeanette Levy, um, she's she's got a copy of my book, and she's like, she's like, man, you bring up a lot of hard a lot of hard and raw questions and she's like um none of us even thought to even even approach the attorney general but select few but they were cut off so quick and she's like she's like you you bring a lot of uh, questions up in your book that needed to be answered you know so and and hindsight's 2020 but Mm -hmm. yeah the the reporters they're only going to give you what law enforcement gives you to to talk about yeah, they, they, they were. And, t- I mean, <laughs> look, we both li- live in the real world. Reporters, what they often, what they are want, what they try and do is to mirror public, pu- popular public opinion, don't they? That, that's right. Um, you know, like it, it's that that sells. It, 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 it's pampering to, the, to, to what the people want to hear. So that if the people want to hear about this, um, about this evil killer, Stephen Avery, then they they, they 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 will give them as much as that as they possibly can, you know, right. regardless and, of whether it's anywhere near the truth or not. And, and you just said the word evil. You know, Teresa Hallback 
ironically dies on October 31st, but they never call it Halloween. They steer away from Halloween. They'll call Brendan Dassey and Stephen Avery evil, but they don't chalk none of her death up to a satanic-like ritual. I mean, if you if you mutilate a body, you burn a body, you rape her, you cut her throat, you shoot her, that's that's pretty damn satanic. So how come how come they never brought in the term Halloween? How come they never brought in satanic sacrifices? Anything? You, you, I, I mean, some of that should have, should have came in, and 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 it, it, I just find it very, very manipulating and controlling that they made sure to stay clear of the term Halloween and make sure the, uh, the the date was used as October 31st. You know, when you go out of the way to call Halloween October 31st, there's a reason. And, and that's because that's because they could never sell Brendan Dassey and Stephen Avery as these evil people in the world that they were using Halloween, you know? Yeah. So, um, so, so, the, so their own their own theory to use October thirty first, they um, contradict their own their own evil sayings of the two gentlemen. You know, um, yeah. I mean, if if you're if you're saying that they're so so um, evil, why the hell didn't you bring Halloween in it thirteen years ago when it happened? Mm-hmm. I, I I mean, All Hallows Eve Day goes right around with with satanism and evil you know i mean if they're so evil and and what why why wasn't that the day of their sacrificial uh moment you know yeah um so just just to get back though to um mark wiegert um i've i've got a a question here um when, when when it comes to his um involvement in in the whole investigation do you feel that he is more organ grinder or monkey? Did you say monkey? Organ grinder or monkey? Which is uh, he? Um, shoot, he, he, he might even be a flying squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> he might be flying somewhere soon. Um, you know, um, I, I, I know Sheriff Pagel had to have a bit of insight what was going on but you hear you hear Weger referring to um the boss you know talking about pagel how they wanted yeah. to go back um to to the avery salvage yard and get someone to go on the property and um there's like the boss has got a new plan we're gonna go get someone to go ask permission to see if we can look on the property and that's when we got the rav4 i i really think that you know like my research um You have your bad apples, but you also have these bad apples in a higher superior level. It's like Fassbender was barking orders to Pagel, then Pagel was barking orders to Uyghur. And even though Fassbender and Uyghur are working, you know, you still got a chain of command there. And Fassbender was still above uh, Sheriff Pagel and Uyghur. So, so, you know... um, I, I would say monkey, you know, because the organ grinder, um, it, the 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 desk location, the physical desk location of Fassbender was right across the hall from Fallon and Lawton Schlager. Okay, you literally walked across the hallway inside the same building, and that was where where Fassbender's office was. So, so the organ grinder, you know, was Fassbender, and then. They only give these these subordinates below them minuscule information. They're like, "Oh, we got something important, but we're gonna check it out. We get ourselves, you know." And 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 that's mm-hmm. why you have um, start event with the DCI finding the bombs. You know, I mean, you can't give that information to lower command, especially if you're gonna plan. That's got to be a top tier operation, you know. I I, I think. Um, I, I, everybody had a piece of the puzzle, but all your orders were coming from the top tier down. You know, they had to be. I mean, uh, look, look at look at Fassbender getting Brendan Dassey's statement, then running to the garage, the Avery garage, at two o'clock in the morning, and they find item FL, the bullet fragment, off camera. You know, I mean, 
it, you, you know, I mean, and, and we all know that that Brendan's confession is a load of bullshit. It was con- so coerced, but then to go and find a bullet to back it up off camera, that that's even that's even worse than the damn confession to me. Mm-hmm. You know, you grit off the whole, you grit off the entire garage, and you go in there, and then the bullet gets found off camera. Yeah. After everything's supposed to be being recorded, so 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 yeah, I, I, I'd say Uyghur is more more of a monkey, flying squirrel. He might he might have a shorter tail than a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> but by the way, I've been following the chat, and uh, and it seems like uh, your, your 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 new your new pup is getting more love than uh, than either of us two put together. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is- gorgeous. Um, I- his name is Komodo. Yes. Like a dragon. He has he has a um a flickering tongue of love and just nothing is poisonous. So um there's a story behind Komodo. My I, I had a I had a dog named Koda. Koda. Yeah. And he was he was like the town mascot. Uh, he wore sunglasses, he was in Dorito commercials, Jeep commercials. Uh, he's about to he's about to do a photo shoot with, with Iams dog food. And um, he got shot and killed, and uh, I, it really broke my heart. I mean, it was, I mean, he was like my kid. He would have been four years old um, this Christmas, past Christmas day, and he, he got killed on August 24th. Shot, someone shot him right below yeah, the I'm jaw. Let me see the picture, it's terrible. The Komodo had actually came out of the woods, like it was maybe two weeks later. And I just had buried him, you know, two weeks ago. And yeah. right where Koda got shot, Komodo came out of the woods, the exact spot. And I seen him 80 yards up from the driveway. And I called his name out. And he just stayed. And I ran over there. I was like, Koda! And um, I ran over there. It wasn't Koda, but he's the same breed, the same size. I put his collar on him and yeah. never even had to adjust it. I mean, but he's got, he's yeah. got this mannerisms. He's just... He, everything is my other dog so uh he he's coda reincarnated but um Definitely. Uh, it, it took me a while to get a name for him because i thought someone would claim him you know so, yes so yeah. every, every day for like three months he didn't have a he didn't have one name we oh. named him like denver one day we named him sam we named, <laughs> we give him a new name he got he got hopscotch one day and then i finally Whenever I figured no one was gonna claim him, I took him to the vet to see if he was microchipped. He wasn't microchipped, you know. They, yeah. they estimated his age. He's 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 around three years old. But um, finally stuck with Komodo because I wanted something close to Coda, and he's like Coda reincarnated. So he got the name Komodo. Yep. And, and... Well, uh, if if you if you can bring him up to the camera just a bit. Oh, okay. he's he's out here running around. Come here, Komodo. See where he runs off. We have a hundred yeah. acres out here, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here he is. Come here. Say hello to everybody out there in YouTube world. Say hello. Say hello to everybody. Say I am Komodo. <laughs> I am the most precious thing in the world. He's uh, <laughs> <Look at> the eyes. <laughs> his, his ears will twitch and like like Coda. Um, you know, Coda, his ears don't stay up all the time, but Coda's ears would stay up all the time. Yeah. And if if you hear something to the left of you down the way or to the right, his ears would go different ways at the same time. They would <laughs> they would fold back up. So they, they 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 would break dance. Okay. So like <laughs> I gave I gave his the ears the term of Kodar. You know, yes. that was like Kodar, and then. His ears do the same thing, and he's actually got the same color pattern as Coda's ears, oh, except yeah. they don't stick up all the time. But, but like he, he reminds me so much of him. I, I, I got to catch myself from calling him Coda, and yeah, that was just a heartbreaking situation. But um, it was. I remember. Yeah, it's like God just sent him back to me. He just uh, it, it's it's so <laughs> weird because I. It I is. Read facebook that morning I, I i went into a grieving process you know with yeah. that dog and and i i just got on facebook i said god if i could just see my dog for just just one more day you know 
just one one more day, just an hour, just le- and then it was that evening he come out the woods and <laughs> hey, I, I I mean, what are the odds the same breed dog comes out the woods where your other yeah. dog died? I I think. I went and bought a lottery ticket. I won 20 bucks that day. It was a scratch off. I probably should have paid, played the mega millions or something too. But, but I, I mean, I, you got better odds of winning the lottery and you got better odds of being struck by lightning twice to winning the lottery, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I'll, I'll be serious with you. When, when you told me about the, when you showed me the pictures of Coda and what had happened and the fact that it was clear that it was outside a certain property, I, I was genuinely worried that that you you, you were going to go and try and find who ever done it and um, and cause them some serious harm. Well, I I called the police. The police wouldn't get involved, and yeah, uh, and that that was really really upsetting. Um, I, I um some people asked which house because I I know the person had done it, and people took care of some business for yeah. for karma's a bitch, and you know you go. Yeah. Cut, um, most dogs, even when they're puppies, they will mouth on you and bite and like just play fight with you. You know, Coda, mm-hmm. Coda had never put his mouth on anybody in his entire life. Like he, yeah. he never did the play biting or anything. He was the most bashful, sweetest, little shyest dog in the world. And for someone to just shoot him like that, it was, it was heartbreaking, you know, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, um, um, you know, they, a lot, a lot of people were pissed off in town about that one, you know, because, I, I mean, he was like the town mascot, you know. Yeah. Um, pick, well, uh, re- restaurant owners would let me bring him inside the restaurant and he would eat, you know. Like, they they bring him little steak burgers and whatever he wanted. It was on the house, you know. He was <laughs> drive through Taco Bell. They give me, a, like, a order of steak. So so yeah, uh, now now we just got Komodo, but but I I honestly believe I mean it's strange, but I believe he's um he's Koda reincarnating. It's it's a heart heartwarming story, you know. Yeah. Can I can I get back to? Um, oh yeah, yeah, sorry about that, guys. <laughs> no 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 because because the um Komodo was getting all the all the attention and quite rightly so. Um, I was just I was just. Um, I've, I've made a note here about a tweet from Kathleen Zellner yesterday, which which um, c- kind of encourages me when she talks about that she will now be able to present an avalanche of evidence. Right. And that could be the thing that, 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 that for me, you know, I, I, I totally get the, the, the concerns of Joss Cole being pegged like Muslaga's son and and the way that they were able to close Brendan's case down, um, and and I, I, I get that, um, but I'm I'm just hoping that that if Kathleen Zellner is able to do it, as as you, you as you are saying to look beyond Avery Road, look look at not not just not just the evidence of the the the, the sort of wrong evidence of the case, but also the way that the state want to play this game. That, uh, that ultimately it will start to bring bring their whole corrupt house down. You, you know that's interesting. Her avalanche. Um, it, you know, if I, I know we got we got emails between Fallon and Ken Kratz. Okay, yeah. and and I had I sent you the photo of how um, you know it was um, it was uh, Brendan Dassey's investigator that um during his appeal in 2010 they had did an ex parte and fallon is mentioning to ken kratz that it was probably illegal and they they were wanting to know what was on record so they could sweep it under the rug and i brought that up to you but um the, i'm anxious to see if zellner was able to get a hold of fallon and fast spenders emails to one another and then you got fallon and lawton schlager's emails any 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 type of you know, their offices are walking distance, right? Right there in a 10, 10 foot radius, you know? So, so, um, 
if Zellner has that avalanche, okay, we 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 know the Zelnami was pretty was pretty dangerous and effective. So if you already took him out at the shore level, now we're coming down from the mountainside, you know, with, <laughs> with your avalanche. So so um, you, you know, in the shore level, that's that's just that's just burying Ken Kratz at the county level. But your avalanche is coming down top tier. It's gonna it's going up to Fallon and everybody and Fassbender and and. I, I say if she could get a hold of emails between Fallon and Fassbender, she would she would find a lot of crazy shit. I mean, we even got we even got Fassbender telling Sherry Colhane put put Teresa Hall back in Stephen Avery's garage, right? So so man, if I was a fly on a wall in Lawton Schlager's office in two thousand and five, November, and then again back in, in March of two thousand six or or yeah, I mean those emails. If, if Zellner, if Zellner's doing her her research and she's got an avalanche, then you know, um, you, you know she's had to find something because we got Fassbender holding on to the to the hard drive pornography DVD. We got um, but 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 I, I'd be anxious to see what she's unearthed between Fallon, Fassbender, and Lautenschlager in terms of emails. Um, the, the ones with Kratz are pretty disturbing between Fallon and Kratz and then Fassbender to Sherry Colhane's disturbing. So what about Fallon to Fassbender, you know? Mm-hmm. Were they were they quote dumb enough, unquote, to um email each other? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know? The, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do something that I've I don't think I do very often at all. In fact, I can't remember ever doing this before, but I'm actually gonna read one of the questions that somebody has put from Lisa Fallon. Lisa, Lisa Fillon, sorry, not Fallon, Fillon. Oh Lord, you done insulted that woman. We we apologize, Miss Lisa. We apologize. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Lisa Fillon, and she's put. Uh, I have a question, and that is: Will Fallon, Garn, and Williams be removed from the case if it goes to court? Um... I think you've answered that already. Yeah, but um, Fallon was out of it. Yeah, F- F- Fallon. Phone here, Fallon. Fallon re- like recused re- himself and resigned from the case earlier. You know, in two thousand eighteen, like right at the end of it. Um, and then you know, Gons come out of retirement, and and to me, to me, I think Fallon's trying to trying to pull the people he knows he can whip into shape they need to be removed from the case um if they're gonna be i mean that's that's just up to the way the courts look at it um now the the only thing is you got a lot of you got a lot of power in these um and these gentlemen fallon fallon is the third in command of the state of Wisconsin, basically, you know, and, and just to take him off the case, we've seen him recuse himself from an issue, but he's already jumped back on. So if you've recused yourself and stepped off the case, but then you got the power to bring yourself back onto the case, that says a lot right there. Um, you, you know, I, I see a conflict of interest with gone on. I see a conflict of interest with, with Fallon on who was the other person she mentioned, Paul, so that was it was fun, gallant, and obviously our wonderful Mark Williams. Okay, Williams, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know how his testimony will be perceived, but um, I, I, I think he would, he would be a, a witness call, you know, for the state. But, but definitely, definitely, if you've recused yourself because you found a conflict in your own thing and you step, you, you stepped off the case, but then you step back on. That shows you the type of power Fallon has right there already. Well, yeah, I mean, t- to me, it just strikes us the fact that they, they want the old guard to try and uh, perpetuate this wrongful conviction. I mean, right. I, 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 can, I can appreciate that, that to a certain extent, they, they want people who were involved with the case the first time because, you know, I mean, neither of us, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to put it, put it this way around, um, I heard somebody who was a guilty in another case, n- nothing to do with, with making a murderer, uh, chatting with Eric Jose and saying, look, 
I used to be a, used to be uh, on the on the side of 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 innocence of this this woman this this Dali whatever her name is. Um, he then became an absolute convinced person of of her guilt, and and he he said, look, you know, the, I would love Harley Rowdy your case. Yeah, I would love, I would love yeah, okay. for the evidence to come forward to prove that I'm wrong, right? Now, if if there was evidence that came forward that proved that Stephen Avery really was guilty, we we would want him treated, you know, the, the, the same way as all the guilters. It's it's it's. If of course, of course, we we you know we 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 we, we don't want people getting out for uh, if 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 they're guilty, you know that. Obviously, we, <laughs> we we want the system to work how it's supposed to. Yes, work. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but with the with, with with the way that everything is is, is, is falling down, as, as you were saying saying earlier, people throughout the world, and and not just not just the the, the world of the Super Bowl playing countries, you know, the, the entire world, all four corners of of the globe. Are taking an interest in this, um, and, and and I I just can't see how how the the state of Wisconsin um, are gonna com continue to deny that there is wrongdoing in this case. I I, I I just I just see see their whole you know pack of cards starting to tumble down. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Um... But that's like that's like Peg Lightenslager starting it off. She was protecting Manitowoc County from 1985 from oh yeah. Manitowoc did nothing wrong, and then you know um, all these issues that were going into Stephen Avery's wrongful conviction, even even custodial interrogation being one of those issues at the time on this Avery task force. All these issues come back to convict both Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey, and she never came forward. But we have um, we have Fallon and Fassbender who were trained by members of these task force. Um, Fallon is right there in her office. So, you know, if you, if, you had a, if you had an ethical team to begin with, none of this shit would have ever happened. If it was an ethical team to begin with, none of this shit would have ever happened. So, so of, course, of course, they're going to say, no foul in Wisconsin, on Manitowoc County again, but we, we, we know better than that this time around. I mean, you got 20 million watching eyes. Where where the hell are you going to go, you know? Mm -hmm. um, when, um, oh, by the way, I was going to mention as well, um, one of our many, many viewers, um, I'd like to thank everybody for, for joining us um, this afternoon, this evening, this morning, whatever whatever time frame you're at. Um, <laughs> We had uh, Miss, Mr. Bogotka joined us, um, and again, he was getting more attention than, than the pair of us put together, of course, quite rightly so, Dave, because uh, you are, um, you are um, a uh, kind of, well, I'm going to say the, the word, a legend amongst um, people involved in this case, because uh, cause you've been there all along, and... Uh, um, I, I, li I like Dave so much. I started modeling my beard off of his when he when he used to grow his out. Really, <laughs> I remember when you never had a beard at all. I remember when I didn't have a beard and I was doing videos. I know. Huh? Dave, Dave inspired us to grow a beard. Then he bloody went and fucking shaved. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it's like Dave, what are you doing? We we're, were trying to join you, but man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we do, do you know what? I, I, I watched a video of of him, and he was sat in his deck chair enjoying the sun, and it just reminded me of a Super Trump album called Crisis Rock Crisis, where the guys just sat there sunbathing. <laughs> <laughs> Is, is uh, Dave is Dave with us now live? Is he um, well, he, he was certainly on the chat just uh, oh, just a week okay. while ago, so. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure he is. Um, Dave, are you out there, Dave? 
Dave, Dave, come on in, Dave. Let us know if you're there. Um, the Quality Show today is sponsored by Dave's Old Beard. <laughs> <laughs> old Beard, did you say? Old Beard. <laughs> old Beard with a D. <laughs> hey, hey uh, I already got our prediction. Okay, if we end up at the June rally in Wisconsin, we're going to get a PCUI. That's going to be Paul Capaldi and under the influence in Manitowoc County. They're going to call us in in a silver BMW Z4 Roadster. <laughs> They're yeah. gonna, we, we got two gentlemen PCUI and that's Paul Capaldi and under the influence. And <sighs> re, re, remind us to, to get a, to get a Google map of all the back roads before we drive there in case we got to take a detour. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. I'll... I mean, the, the thing is that uh, Sheriff Herman has retired, and uh, this this is something I've always always wanted to ask you about this because, whereas I've chatted with him a lot on on the phone, you actually met the guy. Yeah, he, he's 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 kind of scary, like, yeah. like, like conniving scary. Like, am I going to get arrested before I'm even out here? And and. And you know when when I did a lot of my research in Wisconsin, I had to go in there being pro hallback, yeah, Stephen, because I didn't want to tell you know I was just asking political questions, you know. But shit, I I mean he he comes off like just you know how you know how they say some people have gaydar, and if a gay person gets around, <laughs> the the gaydar goes off like. There was just a vibe about him. There was like ding, 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 ding. I don't know how to describe it other than that, but it was like nerve wracking. I, I kind of felt like a ninja incognito to begin with. So I mean, I probably had a lot of paranoia, you know. Sure, um, sure. But um, yeah, you, you mentioned Gundrum earlier. Yes, Mark Gundrum. Um, now he's he's an interesting character, and yeah. I I mean um. You know, we we have Bernadine, his daughter, right on your um yeah. Page. And then I wrote what I wrote, and she she flew to coop quick. She just she just up and left, like you know. Um, but but um, everybody basically that worked in the Avery Task Force or on the commission that had anything to do with the political sense, the 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 political scene. You know, since Avery's conviction and during the pretrial, they were all getting different positions. You know, like like Gundrum became a judge, and you know, it's like, did, did you become a judge because you 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 basically gave over the Avery task force to Peg when she asked for it, and she just changed the name of it. You know, and it, it it's kind of it's it's scary to see. You you know, they were. They gave out awards to the people that convicted Stephen and Brendan. They were yeah. giving awards out. It's like, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna award you for for wrongfully convicting somebody. Who yeah. the hell does that, Paul? What other in what other state or country are you gonna get a damn award for wrongfully convicting somebody? Well, what what you've got to bear in mind there is that, is that I've I've read some of the reports that that members of of, of Manitowoc Sheriff Department have, have written about other members, and, it, and it's all about self policing and uh, patting each other on the back and telling everybody how great they are, and it, uh, you know I mean it's so sycophantic it 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 was it was nauseous you know to 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 look, to, to read some of this stuff. Oh, by the way, Dave forgot who is still here. He says that he um, I shave once every six months, whether I need it or not. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it, it, it took me three years just to get this out. I wait. I wait. <laughs> no, no, no. A while back before I shaved, I had I had my beard probably about down to here but then right. I it clean but but i didn't do no um no videos you know i just strictly stayed riding and off the 
off the airwaves. I don't want to scare too many people, you know. I mean, you're right, you're, you're scary enough as you are, dude. You know, <laughs> got to protect your eyesight, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, like you, you're Lord Voldemort. I've got my Death Eater jacket on tonight. Right. <laughs> you know? In fact, I, I was going to tell you about this jacket, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I, I kid you not, this this genuinely happened to me. This was, um, I would say, probably about ten years ago. I went to a pupil pupil's house, and it was the the, the oldest of four young young boys. The oldest was when about ten at the time, nine or ten years old, to teach him piano, and he'd got younger brothers. Um, and I was shown into the room where the piano was, but that night. I was doing a gig and I'd got my black trousers, my black shirt, this black leather jacket. I'd even got, because it was a really cold night, I'd got the collar up, you know, like it was like that. Right, right. You know? Okay, so so I, I goes into this room and I hear one of the little boys say to his dad, 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 was that Elvis Presley? <laughs> No, no, son, that's Paul Capaldi. He's, he's, a, little bit, he's a little bit more famous. <laughs> C- Capaldi's been getting his street cred up, guys. He, he's, he's been getting his street. He's, he's pounding some pavement in, in Wisconsin to be over in Scotland, so, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I was going to mention, I, I saw something just, just earlier today. It was a... Um, I can't remember exactly where it was, but it, somebody mentioned that. Uh, is is it true that Josh Josh Redant, obviously of the, of the Redant cr- uh, gravel yard, is married to Norm Garn's granddaughter? <laughs> I haven't heard that one, but if 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 he is, holy shit! I mean, it's. it's it's like everybody's related to everybody else in this, isn't it? You know. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, it's coincidental, not that the Lautenschlager's son's now Attorney General. Um, I, I mean, just look at look at where they put Brad Schimmel back at Waukesha, and that's where where Boutwell was, um, you know, cremated. And yeah. You got a lot of. You got a lot of foxes guarding hen houses on all levels right now, and yeah. and 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 while I'm saying that, while I'm on that note, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people on Stephen Avery's own side in the defense told everybody to look at Ken Kratz and Ken Kratz only. You you didn't see Jerry Jerry Buden and Dean Strang running around saying. Oh, look at Fallon! You didn't, you didn't see him run around saying, "Oh, look at Fastbender." They, they wanted to keep your your eyes on the on the um, county level, but now now that you know Zellner's like, "Hey, we got some some deep shit going on at the top tier level," you know it, it, it that that kind of disturbs me in the sense that that if Fallon sits there in the trial and says if you know, if the defense wants to say that the cops had anything to do with this, they they do so at their own peril. Yeah. But, but and and have the audacity to say that, yet Buting and Strang never blow a whistle at that top level and keep your eyes focused on Kratz. You know, like they could have they could have put Zellner at the top tier direction three years ago, and every everybody was calling me crazy. Um. Oh no, Fallon's ethical. Even Zellner said it herself. Fallon is ethical. He does not need to be investigated. Three years later, he's being investigated. I'm like, look, it's out there. Should anybody tell someone do so at their own peril? That's what got me investigating Fallon off the rip because I'm like, wait, are you threatening their careers? Are you threatening their life? What, what? What 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 is your your terminology of peril referring to at that moment? You know, it's, yes. That, that that's just that's disturbing as hell to say that to someone in court, and the judge just brush it off. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. peril. Peril to me means death. It means oh, yeah, yeah. Something's gonna die, whether it's a career or a person. You're gonna do it at your own peril, and that's the man you need to be looking at. And and 
so, so, so to bring that sex scandal of, of Ken Kratz on um, the sexting scandal, you know, th- there's one thing that I'll agree with Ken Kratz on, and the only thing is that that sex and scandal really had no business in making a murder. It didn't affect a trial in any shape or way. It had nothing to do with it. What it did, it made Ken Kratz a supervillain for all the wrong reasons, and it distracted everybody from the top tier level to begin with. And 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 to me, I I, I mean I mean yeah, it's disturbing that he did the sexing thing, but it it didn't affect the conviction of Stephen Avery in two thousand seven. You know. No, but but it, but, it, but it, 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 it presented this presented us with a, a, an insight into Ken Kratz, not just the attorney, but also Ken Kratz the person, the, the which, person which, which right. to explain why he was the you know the, the attorney that he was listen i'm it's 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 half past midnight here just gone so oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, guess I'm well, well what i'm going to do is is i've got so many questions for you but i'm going to save them up you see i'm going to save them for next time right and that, and that way i've got an excuse to invite you on again but i've got one <laughs> question i've got a question I've got a question for you, and 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 this this is this is. I know it's a bit morbid, but when the bones were handed back to Teresa Holbrook's family, what they were handed back to a funeral home was that also a crematorium? Um, Could, you know. Do, do we really know if the Hallbacks even received the bones? Right, you know. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, I mean, there's still a pretty good theory out there that if she's alive, then if they're stating that the bones got handed back, but Teresa Hallback's alive, and and if it's ever unearthed in the future, then we know the the Hallbacks were in it at the same time because they'd be if if you never got bones back, they'd be stepping forward saying, "Hey, they never gave us no damn bones back." So, so is is you you know that question? It's a good question, but. But what answer to what story and theory do you want it for? <laughs> you you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I I do have a huge problem with Mike Holbach. Um, I I do not believe um, anything that he said um, involved in the case. It beggars belief that once again the journalists chose not to to sort of completely hound him over his. The grieving po- process might take weeks, months, or years. Yeah, we, we don't that know how long it can take. Absolutely ridiculous. That, that, listen, that, no way, no way would Mike Holbeck get away with saying that in the UK. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 then, and then, like like I write in my book, um, you had the 18 voicemails that Mike Holbeck was deleting. Um, Hello, you're a communication major, and... You know your sister's missing, and you're going to start deleting voicemails on her phone that could lead to the last person that contacted her. Who the hell does that? Yeah. Uh, it was probably Ryan Hillegas leaving a message like, Hey, Teresa, I know you're going to Canada. Um, I'm going to bring your day planner back. And then Mike's like, Damn you, Ryan. We. <laughs> you, you, you never know, but who, who would del- start deleting voicemails? Knowing your damn sister's missing, that that's that's stuff that you know you want an investigator to look over. Yeah, you yeah. know, I mean that, and you're a communication major, you know. Yeah, but but you're gonna delete voicemails. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, he wouldn't have got away with anything like that outside the state. Only in America, Paul. Only in well, America. If you yeah. got the money, yeah, it's the way. <laughs> Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd like to think that, that in, in quite a lot of America, th- things have improved tremendously. And and, and I, I do genuinely believe, and well, sincerely hope and, and believe that, you know, that in, in years to come, people will look back on what happened to Stephen Avery and they, they, will, they, will, they will say, well, this, this, this is what you don't do. This is what you don't do 
in in this country anymore. We're gonna we're gonna cut this out. Um, a little bit like I'm gonna make a special request when they do it. I'm gonna request yeah. that all the um, all those awards that were given to everybody are damn restored are are destroyed. All the placards they got and everything. Like okay, bring your award back. We're 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 resending your <laughs> your award. Bring them back. We're gonna burn them. Give yeah. you a, give give the police department awards for yeah. for um for wrongfully convicting someone. What? <laughs> Please. Yeah. No. My 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 question would be though, uh, with, with regard to bones, if they were handed back, do do you do I, I do you think that they they would have recremated? bones I, I i i find that very odd that they would recremate bones that had already been cremated or would they bury them or um i, I would say they probably would have buried them you know um uh, in hypothetically if she was dead and they were they just had their own strange way of dealing with grief and they got the bones back they wouldn't want to burn her twice excuse my morbid I I know that that, that that that's exactly what I was thinking. I I I, I mean it's like why why cremate her again? Why why put her through the fire again? You know, yeah. I mean, and I'm trying to be polite about that, but but you know, I, after everything that was done to my daughter, I just be like, okay, let's bury her. Let's just hold a burial. So so on that note, you know, there's those bones should be available. I mean it. It'd be disrespectful and I guess, um, you know, not, not, not politically correct to, um, go dig her up and exhume her or whatever. But, you know, I mean, my, my guess would be on, on that theory, if they were genuine and she was deceased and they gave the bones, they would bury her. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I tend to concur with you. Uh, listen, as I say, I'm going to say cheerio. Um, what, what, what I will add as well is that um, I, um, I, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that I've got some viewers from uh, the other side of the world over there in, in Australia. So uh, it's, it's, this is a wee shout out to the fact that. Uh, I'm hoping to have a, a chat with Mark Hoddinett towards the end of the week, and it's going to be at an hour that's going to be suitable <laughs> for, <laughs> for, for the Australian viewers because because I, I actually feel sorry for them because a lot of them are, 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 are getting the videos at, at the at the worst possible worst possible possible time of the day for them. So uh, so anyway, um, but but also obviously I look forward to chatting with you again. Um, Chad, um, I look forward to, to having another chat with uh, with Dave. See what his thoughts are on the case. Um, uh, I suppose I'll have to do something with the dude sometime soon. You know. Yeah, yeah. If he could ever quit working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, he's he's on a special mission mission at the moment. He 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 is he is working on something very special, which hopefully. Hopefully he's going to uh, he's going to expand upon at some point in the future. But uh, that's all I'm going to say about it. So uh, listen, Chad. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Uh, it's it's really great to chat with you. And uh, you know, it it was nice to actually spend um, I would say about about an hour talking about the case because normally we get sidetracked onto all sorts of other things. You know, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. We um, if you get to make it out for any of the rallies or anything, man. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to be careful with the PCUI, the yes. punk, punk party <laughs> under But wear wear your black jacket just in case we uh, we get we have to have our photos taken for newspaper. <laughs> uh -huh. uh -huh. Oh yeah, I'm all shook up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, okay, Chad. You might need to move to Vegas and become an Elvis impersonator. Ah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, okay. but yeah, thanks for having me. Having Pleasure. You on. We'll talk again soon, man. And yeah. God bless. You have, you have a blessed night. And, and um, you. all you out there, thanks for tuning in. And um, Paul, just keep on 
getting your street cred up, you know, Elvis, you got to make him turn over in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get jealous of you. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll talk to you later, Paul. Cheers, Bye. mate. Bye for that. Bye-bye.